Chapter 6, Section 3, we're going to predict the formation of ionic compounds and the stable ions that they form, and we're going to learn how to write an ionic formula. So first of all, what is an ion exactly? An ion is when an atom gains or loses an electron. Realize that gaining results in a negative charge and losing results in a positive charge. Anytime you have a transfer of electrons, you should end up with someone losing with a positive charge and another atom that gains and ends up with a negative charge, both of which are known as ions. If you lose and become positive, it's specifically called a cation, and if it gains and becomes negative, it's specifically called anions. And so ionic compounds form between metals and nonmetals. So a metal plus a nonmetal. And this is very important because it gives you kind of a quick sense of how to tell when a compound has transferred electrons. So recall again, there's a transfer of electrons. You should know that metals lose electrons and they become positive, cations. Nonmetals will gain electrons and become negative anions. This is absolutely ridiculously essential and important to know. So notice in our example here, we have sodium, which loses and becomes positive. That's my metal. And then I have my nonmetal, which is chlorine here. And the chlorine loses and becomes, I'm sorry, gains and becomes a negative one charge. So it's essential to know that the metals are what lose and become positive and nonmetals gain and become negative. So here's another example or same example of sodium and chlorine to show you how they get their octets. Sodium has this one valence that it's going to transfer over to chlorine and it's going to end up sitting right here next to that other single electron. And so if we look down here, both the sodium and the chlorine have their eight valence surrounding them. They have their octet here and here, both of them. They also both have their charges. Sodium is plus one, chloride is minus one. And so they are kind of attracted together and they're held together by something called an electrostatic attraction. So look at the little animation on the right hand side. Which one is going to be considered the metal and which one the non-metal? And we're going to label the red one the metal because it's losing electrons and it becomes positive. We'll call the blue one the non-metal because it gains and it's going to become a negative charge. Ionic compounds are held together by what's known as electrostatic attraction. This is between the cations and the anions, and they form what's known as a network. So here's an example of a two-dimensional network where you have a sodium atom, and it's surrounded by all chloride atoms, and then here you have a chloride, and it's surrounded by all sodium. And so you get this network of positive, negative, positive, negative, and they form a structure. These are held together by electrostatic attraction. Ionic compounds will exist as what's known as a crystalline solid. And here's an example of one for sodium chloride, where again, we have this network, but this is the more three-dimensional look at that network, where you're gonna have your chlorine atom here and it's surrounded three-dimensionally by all sodium atoms all the way around it and so it actually has six sodium ions around it and then you can see your sodium ion if it were in the center would also have six chlorines around it the lattice structure I'm sorry cations and anions form into what's called a crystal lattice so a crystalline solid this is also known as the crystal lattice the lattice structure is very strong and because it's so strong, it causes ionic compounds to have a very high melting point. Lattice energy is also released whenever the crystalline lattice is formed. Ionic compounds do not form individual neutral molecules. That's what covalent bonds do. There are also no bonds in an ionic compound. There's no shared electrons. So ionic compounds are completely opposite of a covalent bond. We represent an ionic compound with what's called an ionic formula. And this is what we're about to learn how to do. 
it's going to show me the simplest ratio of cations to anions in an ionic compound. Okay, so my first example is going to be calcium and oxygen. And so the first thing that I want to do is predict the stable ions that will form. And so what we'll do is recall that calcium has two valence, which is going to cause it to form a Ca plus 2 ion. Oxygen has six valence, which is going to cause it to form an O minus 2 ion. And so that would be number one. So complete, finish the number one. Predict the stable ions that would form Ca plus 2 and O minus 2. The second thing that I want to do is write the ratio of cations to anions, which is also known as the ionic formula. Okay, so this is how we're going to do this. We have a calcium with its two valence. And we have an oxygen with its six valence. One, two, three, four, five, six. Recall how to draw your Lewis dot structures. Now, realize that the calcium here has its two electrons it wants to give away. This electron is going to be transferred over to the oxygen here. The second electron is going to be transferred over to the oxygen here. And notice now. My oxygen has two, four, six, eight. It has its eight valence, its octet. This is going to give the oxygen its minus two charge. And since the calcium got rid of those two electrons, it's now going to have a plus two charge. So these are now transferred over to the oxygen and no longer with the calcium. So how many calciums and oxygens did it take in order to accomplish having an octet for both atoms? It only took one of each, one calcium and one oxygen. So this is my ionic formula, where I have what's known as a one to one ratio. I have a one to one ratio. One calcium to one oxygen allows all the atoms to form their octet. Is there a hint here perhaps? Notice that because the calcium has a plus two charge and the oxygen had a minus two that I only needed one calcium and one oxygen to accomplish the task. Keep that in mind for the future. All right, so let's do this again. Number one, predict the stable ions that would form. Sodium has one valence, so I'm gonna end up with an Na plus one ion. Nitrogen has five valence, so I'm gonna end up with an N minus three ion. So now I have my stable ions that will form. What is the ionic formula? These are my stable ions that form. Okay, so now what is my ionic formula? I've got sodium has one valence and nitrogen has one, two, oops, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, the sodium has one electron to give to the nitrogen. So here's that sodium, it's gonna give that electron to the nitrogen. And now it has a plus one charge and it's done. It has no more electrons to give away. So where is nitrogen going to get the other two electrons that it needs? It's gonna get it from other sodium atoms. So I need exactly two more sodium atoms with their one valence electrons in order to satisfy nitrogen's need for three total electrons. So this one's going to transfer here and this one's going to transfer here. And now these are gone. These both have a plus one. They both have an octet. And now nitrogen has an octet and a minus three charge. So what's the ratio? My ratio is three sodiums to one nitrogen. So I'm going to have Na3N, three sodiums, one nitrogen. And this is my ionic formula.